In today's tutorial, we'll be creating these particular magical clouds. You can create variations of this, and every time you do it, it's definitely going to be something different. So without any waste of time, let's begin. In our default scene, as usual, we're going to go ahead and press X to delete our default cube. Then we're going to press Shift A and search for a meta ball. ball. This is going to be the basis of our cloud. So you can press 1 to go into your front view, and then just scale it on the Z axis to make it a little flatter, then grab it on the Z axis, bring it up, and then just Shift D to duplicate. and this one could remain flat, doesn't have to be, it's up to you. Just scale it around, grab it, then again, shift D, move it a bit on this side, maybe rotate this like that. Then shift D and this one, I don't want to be flat. So I'm going to press Alt S to make it perfectly round again. And then just bring it in, shift D, bring something on this side, maybe scale this up as well. Shift D to something this side, shift D, and just keep duplicating these around and create your mesh to whatever shape you want. And remember, you're creating it in two dimensions. If you want to add in something in the third dimension, you can just press seven or three to go into either your right or top views. And from there, again, you can shift D and just add in some thickness to it. Of course, make sure that you keep changing your views to ensure that you're placing them in places that just make sense for your clouds. And just keep adding in a details as and where you feel like till you're absolutely happy with the shape. Remember the sad thing about this is that it's a slightly destructive workflow. So once you create your shape, this is what you're going to have to stick with. So I like this particular shape. So now I'm going to go to the object data properties over here or your metabolic properties and just decrease these to the minimum values that they go to because this is going to be the base of our displace modifiers. So make sure that when you're doing this, you choose the initial metabol, the first metabol in your outliner because whatever you apply to that applies to the rest, not vice versa. So once you have this all the way down, you'll realize that you can't add any modifiers. And that's why you have to go to object up here and then click convert to mesh. And once you do this, there's no going back. So just make sure you're happy with the shape that you have. So once you've done that, you can go and add in whatever modifiers you want. So we're going to be adding in two modifiers. One's going to be a displace and the other one's going to be a geometry node modifier. However, we want two levels of displace modifiers. So we're actually going to be adding in two. You've added in the first displace modifier you have to go ahead and press new so now there's a new texture so you have to go down to the texture properties down here and change the type from image or movie to clouds now this might look like it's fairly too small and things like that but that'll actually help with the details involved so i'm going to keep it like that and i'm in fact going to reduce the scale even more keep it something down like 0.1 and i'm going to go to the modifier properties and just decrease the strength so maybe a strength of 0.2 is good. After that, I'm going to add in another displace modifier. I'm going to keep that on top of the first one so that this displace happens first. Create a new texture. Go back to the texture properties. And remember that you choose displace 001 and you have texture 001 on it. Change it from image or movies again to clouds. This time you can change the noise basis to something like Voronoi F1. And you can actually increase the scale if you feel like. So I'll go with something like a scale of 1.2. And I also want it to be a lot stronger. So I'm going to go Go back to the modifier properties and increase the strength to something like 1.5. So this is my basic cloud mesh. And now we can start off with the actual geometry node section. So you can go to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to add in a new window, and you can change it from the 3D viewport to the geometry node editor. Then you can press new to add in a new geometry node tree. And you can then press shift A and search for a mesh to volume node. You can place that in between the group input and the group output, and immediately it converts into a cloud. Now things might start getting heavy on your laptop or your computer, so it's best to start saving. The first thing that we want to do is change the density from 1 to something slightly higher so that you get nice volumetric shadows. So we'll increase it to something like 4. After that, the voxel amount is how blocky this is going to be. So right now you see it's fairly blocky. So we don't get any of those details that we had added in through our displace modifiers over here. So we have to increase the voxel amount. So make sure that you don't go too high with it that your computer cannot handle. But since I really want the details to be seen, I'm going to go with 512. Another thing is that if you actually want to see how this is or how much time it's taking, you can actually go down here and for the overlays, just switch on timings. And you can see that my laptop is going to take six seconds just to calculate this voxel amount. If I decrease it, it's going to take lesser time. But I think six seconds is not too long. 6,000 milliseconds, it's fine. So I can go ahead with that. After this, the next thing is setting up all of your render properties. So let's go to my render properties, switch on bloom, switch on screen space reflections. And under volumetrics, the most important parts are setting up the tile size and the samples. We're also going to enable volumetric shadows and we're going to reduce the tile size to something like two pixels for the best output. 
Similarly, you can increase the samples, but since we're not doing an animation, you might prefer lower samples as well. So you've got to try this out and play around with the settings to see what you feel like. For now, I'm also going to switch to the viewport shading of rendered so that we can see what we have. And now you can actually see the nice details of the clouds and the nice volumetric shadows. We can also switch off overlays so that we don't see any of that. You'll realize if you decrease the density down to one or something, the shadows are much lesser. So that's up to you to decide what you feel like and what you require for your scene. I'm actually going to keep the density at two. The last thing that we have to do for our render settings is actually set up our camera. So let's select our camera, press Alt G and Alt R to clear location and rotation, then R X 90 to rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees, and then G Y to bring it back quite a bit. Then you can press zero to actually go into the camera view and then continue grabbing it on the Y and just moving it back, grabbing it on the Z to move it up and just placing it to exactly where you want it. I think something like that is all right. And this cloud seems like it's tilted upwards and I don't want to mess around with the cloud. So I'm just going to actually take the camera and rotate that on the Y axis till it becomes straight. I can just switch off overlays and you won't even be able to tell that anything is actually tilted. So once you're done placing your camera, you can start off with the lighting and the world texturing. So the first thing is my world background. I just want to decrease this to something very dark, almost black is all right. Then choose the light, go to the light properties over here and play around with the settings here. So the first thing is I'm going to change this color to something like a nice pink. And then I'm going to press shift D to duplicate it, move it down. Also grab it on the Y and move it front a bit. And this one I'm going to make orange. And then I'm going to press shift D and bring one towards this side. So I'll just move it on top to the right or to the left over here, change the color, this time make it a nice blue. And maybe I want a purplish color in the middle. So I'm just gonna press Shift D, bring that right to the center and make this a nice purplish color. So that's how you actually color your clouds. And you can play around with the power as well. Make sure that you have everything the way you want it. So I'm going to make the purple down to like 800. And I'm also going to take the orange and just grab it on the Z axis to shift it up a little bit so that it's darker towards the base. Once you're happy with the actual color and of the clouds, you can also play around with the radius of these things. So you see in my orange light, it's a little too bright towards the center. So if I actually increase the radius, you won't get that singular area that's too bright. And you see that really bright area is gone and it actually spreads over a larger area. So you can actually play around with those different settings to get variations to exactly what you want. So once you're happy with that, we can go ahead and add in a plane at the back. So let's press Shift A, plane, then RX 90 and just scale it up till it crosses our entire camera view. Grab it on the Y by pressing GY and just moving it back so it's completely behind the cloud. Scale it up, then give it a new material. And I just want it to be a lot darker and I don't want it to actually be reflective at all. I'm going to go ahead and increase the roughness. Similarly, I don't want to see anything that's outside my camera view. So I'm just going to select my camera down on the camera properties under viewport display. I'm going to increase passport out all the way to one. So that's my background. And the last thing that we need to do is just add in an object of focus. So that's going to be a Bezier circle. I'm just going to switch on overlay so that I can see what I'm doing. Press shift A, curve Bezier circle, RX 90, and then I'm going to go to the curve properties over here, increase the resolution to something like 64. And under geometry, I'm going to go ahead and increase the bevel depth to something like 0 0.01. And then I'm just going to scale this up, grab it on the Z axis, switch off overlays once again, and give it a new material. To actually play around with this material, we're going to change this from the geometry node editor to the shader editor. And we're going to select our principal BSDF and press X to delete it. Then we're going to search for an emission shader. So shift A and search for emission. And we're going to go ahead and plug the emission into the surface. Now we essentially want it to be a gradient that goes around and it goes through a few of these colors. So we'll have some blue, some pink and some orange. So to get that gradient, we're going to have to search for a gradient texture. And if you actually press control shift T with the node wrangler switched on, you can see that the gradient isn't exactly the way we want it to be. So you're going to have to press control T to get the texture coordinate and mapping nodes. And you're going to have to change it from generated to UV. And that way, if you actually remove the metaball object for the time being, you can see using the UV coordinates, it goes from here all the way around in a nice ring fashion. That's what we want. If we actually had it on generated, you can't quite see where the gradient is. Even for object, it's going to go from left to right, which is, which is not what we want. We want it to go around radially. So we're going to have to use the UV coordinates. So now we can just search for a color ramp, plug that in over here. And since we wanted three colors, we're going to add in four 
markers by pressing this plus two more times. Now for it to be nice and smooth, the first and the last markers have to be the same color. So this is how we're just going to separate these out. There's more gap towards the center and less gap here because both of these are not going to be considered as different colors. So let's go ahead and see what we want. We want both these ends since they're down here to be purple. So let's go ahead and give it a nice purplish color and give this end the same color. So how we can do that is we can select this, go down here, and while hovering over it, press Ctrl C. And then when you actually select the rightmost edge, we can hover over it and press Ctrl V. And that way the color gets added in. Now, towards the end, which will be this region, we want it to actually be pinkish. So we can go ahead and add in a pink color. So make it completely bright and make it pink. And finally, this one can be blue. So let's make it completely bright and make it blue. Now we need it to be a lot stronger. So we're gonna plug this into the emission color and we're gonna increase the strength to something like 50 and then control shift click the emission to see what we have. And that looks perfectly all right. However, I do want a little bit of the orange to be present in the ring and that's actually all you need to do. So you can press control S and you can go ahead and actually render the image. Another add on thing that you could do is actually give this a base and make it reflect over something like water. To do that, I'm actually gonna show overlays and make a few changes to my setup. I'm gonna select my camera and just grab that on the Z and bring it down so that we have space for the reflections and the water to actually appear. Then I'm gonna press Shift A and add in another mesh plane. Grab that on the Z to bring it down as well. And I'm gonna to have to rotate that to match up with the clouds. So I'm just gonna rotate it on the Y a little bit till it becomes flush with my camera. And then I can just scale that up fairly large. Now I'm gonna press new to add in a new material for it. And under the materials, I'm gonna increase metallic all the way to one and reduce roughness fairly low to something like 0 0.01. Switch off overlays so that I can actually see what it is. And then just play around with it till you have reflections exactly how you want it to be. Now the reflection from my orange light is actually giving out this huge circle that I don't want. So how we can fix that is actually select the light from your outliner, so that's light 001, and just change specular down to zero. So that way it won't reflect on the floor anymore. So now this just looks like a plain reflection. We want it to actually be somewhat like water. So to do that, we're just gonna add in a little bit of bump. So we can press Shift A and search for a noise texture. Press Shift A and search for a bump node. Now I'm gonna press the color into the height and place the normal into the normal. Now this entire section is actually being made on the spot. So there might be a lot of changes because I haven't done this part of it before. It's an idea that I got while creating the tutorial itself. So let's see how it turns out. So this is what we currently have. What I'm gonna do is just increase the scale. So I've just plugged in the noise texture with a scale of 0.5, detail of two, roughness of 0.5, and I've decreased the bump strength to something like 0.5 as well. So I think that's the kind of look that I'm going for maybe a detail of five with a roughness of 0 0.6 as well. So those are just different things that you could do to get different kinds of results. But I guess that's what I'm going with. So once you're done with all of that, the last thing that's left to do is actually just render the image. Hopefully you learned something from that video and you can create variations of this and have a lot of fun. These magical types of cloud renders are seen in various places and I hope you can now know how they create it. Until the next video comes out, don't forget to stay creative.